Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Rohan. I'm a second year medical student studying at Cambridge University. In this video, I'll be sharing some specific tips for A-level chemistry and also what the main topics to revise are. Reflecting on my experience of A-level chemistry, personally, I found it the most straightforward of the sciences. Not because the content itself was easy, but because the exam fit very well with the content. So actually having a good understanding of chemistry definitely helps for the exam. I also found the past papers to be fairly formulaic and repetitive, so it's not hard to start getting really good at the past papers quickly. I think this is reflected in the slightly higher grade boundaries for A-level chemistry. So one tip we can say straight away is obviously past papers are really important for chemistry, and keeping a bulletproof document can really supercharge our performance. If you don't know what I'm on about, then go click this video over there where I talk about this in more detail. Like in the other videos, I want to quickly talk about some of the topics which I think are really important for A-level chemistry and just try break down the subject into something more manageable. A-level chemistry can be split into physical, organic and inorganic chemistry. We'll start with physical because some of it will come up in all three papers. The key concepts in physical chemistry are the basic atomic structure and electron configuration, calculations, so this includes stuff like mass equals Mr. Mole, N equals CV, the gas equation, percentage yield, atom economy. It's important to be proficient with these and really practice these and get to grips with complicated examples because quite a lot of the marks in A-level chemistry are solely based on these skills. Next we have structure and bonding, which I really feel is fundamental to understanding the physical properties of how certain molecules behave. You have energetics and thermodynamics, kinetics and rate equations, which has a bit of maths, equilibria, so Kc at AS and Kp at A-level, and you have a couple of trickier A-level topics like electropotentials and acids and bases. Redox chemistry is also really important to understanding these concepts. Moving on to inorganic chemistry, I feel like a lot of it can be summarized as periodicity and understanding general trends across the periodic table, which allows you to predict the behavior of potentially unfamiliar compounds. This type of stuff includes group seven, group three, the period three and the oxides. You also have transition metals at the end, which is a really nice topic conceptually. Organic chemistry is the one which many people find challenging, but a lot of it can honestly be summarized as functional group chemistry. So you have at AS level like alkanes, alkenes, halogenic alkanes, alcohols. You take this further at A level by studying aldehydes, ketones, carboxylic acids, amines, and aromatic compounds. I feel like a lot of this is learning mechanisms and reaction conditions, but as I'll say many times in this video, understanding the basic chemistry and behavior of each group is vital. Then you have some topics which link a lot of the functional group chemistry together, like organic analysis, organic synthesis, and NMR spectroscopy. Okay, I hope that helped just to see how things fit together. Now we're gonna talk through a few top tips when studying A-level chemistry. Regarding resources, personally, I found the textbook a little bit convoluted. I really like the chem sheet notes. So if your school subscribes to them, definitely make full use of them. The CGP revision guide is okay, but I feel it's a bit basic. Next, I wouldn't bother making pretty notes for A-level chemistry. There's no need to rewrite the textbook. Instead, I would use a technique called blurting, but I actually prefer to call this scribble notes. Basically, all you do is get a piece of scrap paper and try to write down all the most important points in a topic or a textbook chapter. So this is really good for brilling stuff like reaction mechanisms, but it's also good in inorganic chemistry because some of the equations are just really hard to stick. Thirdly, is a more broad point. It is critical to doing well in chemistry, and that is to really understand what is going on so you can deal with unfamiliar compounds and how they behave. And I've noticed this is becoming increasingly common in exams. So in organic chemistry, get really good at the nomenclature, just so you know at least what functional groups you're dealing with. And also for the mechanisms, really solidify the basic concepts well such as what is a nucleophile, electrophile, electron shielding, benzene ring delocalization, pi bonding stuff I really can't remember at this point. But getting to grips with these concepts will allow you to work stuff out from first principles. I honestly found it really useful asking my friends who are much more into the subject and want to take this at university because they could explain stuff in a really nice way which helped me to remember the core concepts behind what we are learning. Similarly, for the required practicals, learn the reason behind every step. The exact method isn't that important. Instead, it's the overall thing you're trying to achieve and the appreciations of how the compounds are working and actually behave in a laboratory setting, which will help you answer paper three questions. For example, how do you get rid of impurities in a mixture? Remember, you have to keep naked flames away from flammable organic compounds. And how do you react insoluble substances together? All these things will be useful for your experimental design questions. I think the main thing for 
for paper three is not to detach it too much from your paper one and paper two content, but really try to link them together and form a really cohesive mental model of all of A-level chemistry. And finally, just a small tip for organic chemistry, and that is to get proficient with skeletal formulae. I know this can be a bit awkward, but I've noticed that the exams are starting to include more and more skeletal structures, and they're even sometimes expecting reaction mechanisms to be drawn in skeletal formulae. So when you're practicing mechanisms, make sure to try some of them in skeletal form. I think the reason why they're going this way is because a lot of actual chemists prefer to use this form of notation rather than the more long form displayed formulae or structural formulae. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, please give this video a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. If you are considering applying to medicine at university, you might want to check out this video series, which I've been working on over the last year or so. In this series, I give detailed tips for each stage of the application process, so I'm sure you'll find it helpful. Anyway, take care and bye for now. Mm -hmm.